Hello YouTubers, it's been a little while since I did any work on my uh, CNC milling machine. Uh, finally got a chance to work on it. Been a long summer, busy at work all the time and uh, finally got a little time to get out here in the shop and work on this. And uh, it's funny, my brother always ribs me about not being able to build anything and not including a little bit of wood in it. And here, the, almost the whole machine is wood. So, uh, he hasn't seen it yet. His reaction should be interesting when he does. But, uh, I've spent a little time out here wiring it up. Uh, got the, uh, got the three axes moving. There's the Z-axis. There's the, uh, the X-axis. There's the Y-axis. Now, it all works. Got the uh, limit switches and home switches wired up onto it. Getting close, not quite ready for prime time yet. Got some more work to do to it. I uh, the uh, the superstructure here that holds the uh, the Y and the Z axis isn't actually bolted to the X axis yet. It's just sort of sitting up there. I need to square it up and bolt it on securely. I need to just decide on the actual height that I want the. Uh, the superstructure above the table too. I may want to jack it up a little bit. Um, I got a few other things I need to do. Um, ideas I have on how to level the table and uh, whether if that if that idea pans out I may make another video about leveling the table. I got an idea about gluing about nine wooden uh, bosses on here or, or hard plastic bosses on here and then machining them all to the same height with uh, with the mill and then bolting the table onto them and that way I don't have to like machine the whole table to the same height pain in the butt. We'll see if that works out. If it does I'll make a video of it. Uh, a few other things to do. It doesn't have an e-stop switch yet and I can hear all a lot of people out there groaning and saying oh what the hell do you need an e-stop switch for? You got a you got a software e-stop switch. What do you want a hardware e-stop switch for? It's like the like the car guys who say, you know, brakes are for quitters, you know, but they do come in handy every once in a while. So, uh, but I've got the stuff I need to, uh, to build an e-stop. I've got, I got the switch here. I got a little box for it and, uh, I'll mount it on here somewhere. Just, you know, e-stops have saved my ass with big machines in the past. So it's, it's good to have one. So I'll, uh, I'll build that and get it on there eventually. Uh, my old uh, my old trusty ancient XP laptop running Mach 3 and I stick with this because I've got the uh, I've got the parallel port attachment for it. I mean good luck finding a parallel port attachment, a real real bi-directional parallel port attachment for a modern laptop. I mean good freaking luck finding that. So I stick with this old one for now. Um, over here is uh, the electronics. Cheap no-name Chinese uh, three-axis stepper motor control with parallel port interface designed to work with Mach 3. Got it off of uh, Amazon. It's like 35 40 bucks. I forget the exact price now. And a uh, high output 24 volt power supply. All screwed down onto a wooden plate for now just to, to make it work. I got a couple of current limiting resistors for the Z-axis. Needed it to make it move smoothly. The wiring's a bit of a mess now. I'll clean that up and maybe even put the whole thing in an enclosure before I'm done. But it's coming along. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the manual for the stepper motor controller I'm using. If you're interested, you can Google it and probably find some on Amazon or eBay. They're pretty cheap. Uh, they don't come with very good documentation. This, this is a pretty thin manual and it leaves a lot to the imagination. Uh, you'll have to uh, do a little bit of sorting out things on your own to figure out how to make it work. But it's for the price it can't be beat. This is actually my second one. I blew up the first one. I'm not sure exactly what I did wrong, but man, it, it got ugly. It got ugly quick and there were bits and pieces flying around the room and lots of smoke. All the magic smoke came out. I suspect, I suspect I had a little bit of uh, a piece of uh, wire from when I was wiring it up that fell down across a couple of traces. I'm not sure, but I was careful to clean this one off before I did any test test runs this time. 
just in case that was what the problem was. But it works. Um, heat sink doesn't even get warm on it down there from uh, extended movement of the of the axes. It'll be interesting to see um, how how warm it gets in actual operation. This thing is no speed demon, but hopefully it'll get the job done. There's the z-axis. Slow! But that's as fast as I can drive the motor without it stalling out. But, you know, this thing doesn't have to be a speed demon because I could just start it and walk away. That's the theory, anyway, and let it do its thing. I don't care if it takes all day, as long as it makes a, makes a good job of it. And then, of course, here's the... Uh, the y-axis. A little faster. Again, not a speed demon. And then the x-axis. Oops, wait a minute. There's the x-axis. That's the same speed as the y-axis. So I've got not quite 24 inches on y and not quite 36 inches on X. Although I doubt I will use that much of the range of travel. I think it's going to be a lot more accurate if I confine it to more like a 16 by 20 inch area in the center of the range of travel. I think it'll probably be a lot more accurate and repeatable there than trying to go full full Monty side to side on the thing. We'll see. I'll play around with it a little bit. I'm using uh, drawer slides on both the X and the Y axis for you can't see, well there you can see that down there on the X axis is the drawer slides mounted on the sides um, and they're pretty rigid there's a little bit of movement to them I had to uh, I had to add some had to add a rod in here and a linear bearing on it to uh, take a lot of the slop out of the Y axis the X axis seems to move a lot nicer but if it gives me trouble in the future, I have the option of doing the same thing, adding a, adding a, a stiffener rod and a, and a linear bearing to take any side-to-side any -side wobble out of it. Um, how accurate is this thing going to be? It's hard to say. It's made out of wood. You know, it's, it's, got, it's got, you know, Lowe's threaded rod for the, for the lead screws, so... Probably not super accurate, but I, I just needed to carve foam and maybe wax to make uh, molds for casting glass. That's that's my primary use for it. If I can cut plywood with it, that'd be great. You know, I'll find all kinds of stuff to do with it. Maybe it'll cut plywood. Cutting metal, eh, I can't see it handling the uh, the cutting forces of cutting metal. Cutting plywood probably maybe even out of the question. But foam, wax, it should work okay almost no cutting forces there so we'll see how it works it's getting close I'll have the first cut soon another weekend or so of uh, work out here in the shop on it get it ready to go and then I'll start um, dialing it in tuning the backlash and uh, do a few test cuts with it and see how it works so just wanted to give you an update on it because I haven't worked on this project in a while just uh, the day job is just killing me and by the time I get home, I got no energy or ambition left. But uh, it's cool out here in the garage right now this time of year, so I wanted to get a little bit of work on it done and uh, got it all wired up and uh, testing it out and getting close, getting close. I'll make some videos of it in action later. Thanks for watching. Bye.